Do you want to do well on the AP statistics exam this May? And I'm not even talking about well. I'm talking about do you want to destroy the exam? Well, I'm Mike Princhak, and you may be a stressed out AP statistics student who is trying to cram nine huge units of AP statistics into the last couple weeks before the AP exam. Well, I got three enormous tips that are going to help you prepare for the exam so that you can go from panicked to prepared. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You do not have to do well on the AP statistics exam to do well on the exam. Seriously, I got the statistics to back it up. Tip number one, know the date and the time of the exam. The exam kicks off nice and early at 8 a.m. local time on Thursday, May 8th, 2025. It's recommended you arrive a little bit early. Now, I recommend that you don't cram the night before. That's actually going to be worse for you. Get a good amount of sleep. Wake up a little bit early. Eat a fantastic breakfast. Tip number two, know the format and scoring of the exam. The entire exam will take roughly three hours and 15 minutes. The exam is broken up into two sections. The first section is multiple choice. Here you will work on 40 questions and you will have 90 total minutes to do so. Now this section is worth 50% of your total grade. So if you take 50 divided by 40, that means that every single question is worth 1.25 points towards your final composite score. Here's a breakdown for how those multiple choice questions are going to be scattered throughout the nine units. While you're taking those 40 multiple choice questions, keep in mind to think statistically. You've been learning all year about how to be a good statistician. Put those skills to use. Now, there are three big ideas that are going to be covered on the AP statistics exam. Here they are. Big idea number one is variation and distribution. Big idea number two, patterns and uncertainty. Big idea number three, database predictions, decisions, and conclusions. Now, after the multiple choice, there's going to be about a 15-minute break. You can go outside, get some fresh air, grab a bite to eat, get a drink of water, or you can go sit in your car and cry about how bad it was. Section two is the free response questions. This is broken down to two parts, part A and part B. Part A is questions one through five, which have five questions that are each going to have a primary focus. One will have a primary focus on exploring data. Two will have a primary focus on collecting data. A third will have a primary focus on probability and sampling distributions. A fourth will have a primary focus on inference. And a fifth will be multi-focus hitting two or more skills. Now, since 2018, those five questions have gone in that exact order. But there's no promise or guarantee of that, but it has happened for the past six years. Part B is question six. It's called the investigative task. The investigative task assesses multiple skill categories and content areas, focus on the application of skills and content in new contexts or in non-routine ways. In total, you have 90 minutes for all six questions, but this is really important. Please note, no one is going to set a timer and stop you and tell you, now you can move on from part A to part B. You get all six questions at the exact same time, and you have 90 total minutes to do all of them in any order you want. The AP recommends that you spend 65 minutes on the first part A, questions one through five, and 25 minutes on part B, question six, but you do not have to follow that recommendation. My recommendation is that you work on questions one through five, spend all of your time on them, making sure that every single question is fully answered, every part is fully answered, even if you don't know how to do it, absolutely try your best and put something on the paper. Just make sure that all questions are answered in as much context as possible. When you're done with one through five, look at the clock. Maybe you got 10 minutes left, maybe you got five minutes left, maybe you do have 20 minutes left. Then open up number six and see what you could do. Now here's the scoring breakdown for the FRQs. The first five FRQs in total are worth 37.5% of your total composite score. Question six, all on its loans himself, is worth 12.5% of your composite score. Now, some kids will be scared and feel like, well, it's 12.5% of my grade. I have to do something, right? Well, actually, no, because remember, you really only need about a 40 to 45% to get a passing score of a three on the exam. So if you end up not answering question six at all, it's not going to destroy your chances of passing the test that much at all. This year, the AP statistics exam will be hybrid digital. This means that you will be performing the tests on a computer through the Blue Book system. 
Now, here are the details. All 40 multiple choice questions will com be completed digitally on a computer, which means you're going to read the questions on the screen and then select A, B, C, D, or E on the screen as well. Now, in the Blue Book program, you will have the ability to cross out choices and highlight passages. You are still allowed to use any approved calculator, the TI-84 and the numerous calculator most used, but you will also have access to Desmos in the Blue Book system. Now, you will also have digital access to the reference and formula sheet by simply clicking on it at any time you need it. You will not get a paper copy of the reference sheet, but again, there will be a button that you could click to look at it whenever you need it. Now, you will also still be allowed to use scratch paper. That way you could write down any scratch work or do any problem solving on paper before you answer your choice. Now, for the free response questions, things are a little bit different. The six free response questions will be viewed on the computer screen through the blue book, but you will write your responses by hand in an answer document that you will be provided. You will also have access to the reference and formula sheet during the free response question as well, as long as you just click on it and you can view it at any time you need it. If you want more help understanding and previewing what this digital system is going to look like, please use this link. I will also attach it in the description below. This will actually give you a chance to practice the blue book test, and it actually, actually even has some practice questions in it as well, which would also be good for you to do. And remember my big secret, you don't have to do well on the AP stats exam to do well on the exam. Check out these scenarios. In this first scenario, you only get 20 out of 40 multiple choice questions correct. Sounds terrible, it's a 50%. And then on each of the first five FRQs, you only get two out of four points. Again, 50%. And on FRQ six, maybe you didn't even have time to look at it or you didn't get any points at all. That's still going to be a predicted AP score of a three. That's passing. In this next scenario, maybe you could squeak out a couple more multiple choice questions correct and get 25 out of 40. Then on FRQ 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, you get about half credit. And on FRQ 6, maybe you could sneak out one point. That's going to get you a predicted score of a 4. That's a really good score. And in this last scenario, you get 30 out of 40 multiple choice questions correct. Still doesn't sound great. You get two FRQs fully correct. I guess it really doesn't matter which two, but here I have FRQ1, FRQ2, because they actually usually are the easiest. And then on FRQ3, 4, and 5, you only get half credit. And then again, FRQ6, you don't even attempt and you get zero points. That's going to get you a predicted AP score of a 5. And finally, tip number three, study the important concepts and practice them a lot. The AP Statistics curriculum is huge, nine enormous units with tons of topics in each one of them. So hear me, you don't have to know every single thing from AP Statistics curriculum to do well on the exam. You just have to know the really big important things. But how do you know what you need to know to study for the AP Stats exam? There is a secret. In the AP Statistics course and exam description is everything that could possibly be asked of you on the exam. And what I did was I went through that course exam description, I took out every single topic, every single main idea, and I made videos that cover it all. I have videos that cover every single topic, but I also have great unit summary review videos that go over all of the most important things out of each and every unit. If you just watch those videos, hearing all the main concepts, seeing all the big ideas put into action, it's going to go a long way in helping you prepare for the exam. Now, if you want to do some extra studying after watching those videos, then you definitely want to sign up for the ultimate review packet for AP Statistics. Here you have study guides for every single unit that got tons of practice problems that are identical to problems just like you're going to see on the AP Statistics exam in May. Now, the first couple units of study guides are absolutely free. All you have to do is sign up for the Ultimate Review Packet for AP Statistics. Link is in the description below. In the Ultimate Review Packet are also tons of practice questions. I'm talking free response questions that are exactly like the questions that you're probably going to see on this year's exam. And the more practice you do, the better you're going to be when you actually open up that exam and start taking them on your own.
Now, if you're really looking for help to solely prepare for the AP exam, not review all the concepts, just prepare for the exam, you're definitely going to want to check out the Ultimate Exam Slayer. I have a complete link in the description below, but in the Ultimate Exam Slayer, for each of the nine units, you will get an overview in tips PDF and an accompanying video that gives tips and strategies for each and every unit. For each of the nine units, you will also get a set of practice problems in the AP exam simulator, both multiple choice and free response. Now, the AP exam simulator is made to look exactly like the questions will look in the Blue Book system that you will be taking this year. Problems are of the same style and rigor of the AP exam. At the very end, you will also see a full practice exam to really see if you are ready. And all of that exam is in the AP exam simulator. So you can actually practice doing the 40 multiple choice questions on the computer, viewing the six free response questions, and writing your answers on an answer document. And of course, all answers are provided to all questions as well. So if you're really looking to kick it up a notch and perform really, really well on that AP exam, and you're going to want to do a lot of practice, please check out the Ultimate Exam Slayer, link in the description below. Now, the second thing you have to do as you're preparing for the exam is practice the skills of the course. Now, just knowing all the content is only going to get you almost to the finish line. If you want to get all the way through, you have to be able to practice the exact skills that are going to be required of you on the exam. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, again, this is where I go back to you have to be able to think statistically. As you answer each question, you have to think like a statistician. The most important skills are being able to select statistical methods, data analysis, using probability and simulation, and statistical argumentation. If you could practice all of those skills, you will be really, really well prepared for the AP exam. And you could practice all those skills in the aforementioned ultimate review packet for AP statistics. And the third part of your study should include taking practice exams. Don't let the first time that you've seen a full exam be on the actual day of the exam. You should practice a full, full-length test, if anything, just to know what it's like to sit for three straight hours doing nothing but statistics problems. It'll really help making sure that when you sit for that exam, you're ready for it. I would suggest taking one full practice exam, if not two. And if you don't know where to find full-length practice exams, talk to your statistics teacher. They should be able to provide some for you. And if not, guess what? I got two full-length practice exams in the Ultimate Review Packet for AP Statistics. Now, if you do everything that I just said, you're gonna walk into the exam ready to crush it. Here are links to all of my playlists for the summary review videos, topic videos, and much, much more. And here is a link for the ultimate review packet for AP Statistics if you wanna get even more practice to make sure you're ready. So subscribe, stick around, and check out all the great content I have for you to make sure that you're ready for the exam.